Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Zalicious Cooking Series. And we're still on with our pasta series edition and I'm about to show you how to make one very, very yummy and mouth-watering pasta dish. Today I'm going to show you how to make chicken chow mein. Now this is a popular Asian recipe that is super tasty, yummy, delicious and amazingly easy to make. Let me introduce you to the ingredients. For the chicken marinade, you would need one boneless chicken breast, one tablespoon of soy sauce, two tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine or rice wine, half a teaspoon of Chinese five spice, half a teaspoon of baking soda, a pinch of salt and white pepper. For the sauce, you'll need three tablespoons of oyster sauce and a quarter cup of chicken stock. And for the aromatic vegetables, you'll need one cooking spoon of vegetable oil, one light onion bulb, three garlic cloves, half a tablespoon of grated ginger, three scotch bonnet peppers, also known as atarudo, one chicken seasoning cube, three spring onions, two large carrots, one large green bell pepper, one large red bell pepper, one large onion bulb, and some salt to taste. Okay, so before we get right into the cooking process, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Hurry now and hit the subscribe button down below so that you can get instant not notification whenever I upload a new video and just so you can be a part of our family. This is a fun place to be and there's so much, so much amazing recipes to be learned. Okay, so let's get right into it. First of all, I'm going to start by marinating my chicken. Okay, so over here I have some chicken that I've cut into strips, like really thin strips, but it still has a little, a little bit of weight. And this is just one boneless chicken breast. And I'm just gonna transfer all of this right into this mixing bowl here. Okay, so next up I'm just going to throw in this soy sauce. Now this soy sauce is one major ingredient in Asian cooking. So I'm gonna throw this all around and it looks like a little dough, but trust me, it's a lot. And over here I have some Chinese cooking wine. Now this also is a major, major ingredient in this recipe, but if you do not have ch the Chinese cooking wine, you can use your regular rice wine or you can use the dry sherry. And for those who are saying, Winifred, this is Nigeria, how are we gonna get all of these ingredients? I'm in Nigeria too and I was able to get it, so just go to a major supermarket, you definitely will find this in stock there. So I'm just gonna throw in all of the cooking wine. And then next up, I'm going to add some baking powder. Now, baking powder is what's gonna help tenderize the chicken, make it softer and a lot easier to consume. And over here, I have some Chinese five spice. Now, this is also a major ingredient in this recipe. Remember that this is an Asian recipe, so we're trying to keep everything as Asian-y as possible. <laughs> so this is Chinese five spice. I also bought this at the store as well. So everything's gonna go in. This is gonna lend some flavor to this chicken as it marinates. And then over here I have some black pepper and just some salt. So I'll just put in all of the black pepper. And just a little bit of the salt. Because I don't wanna, the soy sauce already has some salt in it. And the soy sauce I'm using is light soy sauce, by the way. So all of that goes in. And then I'm just gonna give this a quick toss to ensure that the chicken is thoroughly coated with all of my, with all of the other ingredients. It's just a matter of marinating the chicken. Usually I marinate for at least one hour or overnight and marinating is very important. It will help for all the flavors infuse into the chicken and then you won't end up with really bland tasty chicken on the outside and something, yeah. <laughs> So it's always advisable to marinate, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go straight into the frying. I'm not gonna marinate at all, but please marinate. And when you're marinating, ensure you marinate in the refrigerator, not on your countertop. Your marination should always be done inside the refrigerator, not the freezer, please. You don't want your, your stuff getting all frozen. Okay, so next up, what I'm going to do is just prepare. I'm trying to prepare everything before I go over to the, um, the gas cooker and I'll just mix up the sauce for this recipe. Over here, I have some chicken stock. Now, this is homemade. I like my things, I, I try to keep things a little bit homemade, but you can use the store-bought ones if you want. So in here is chicken stock, and over here, I have some oyster sauce. Now, oyster sauce is also a major ingredient in Asian cooking. So what I'm just gonna do is transfer all of the oyster sauce right into the chicken stock. Just trying to get every bit of it. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just give this a good stir to combine. You can use a whisk to make the job easier, but I don't have a whisk on hand, so I'm just gonna use my spoon. It's just a basic sauce for the pasta. Okay, so I'm setting this aside and then I'll come over here to start the cooking process. Okay, so for the cooking proper, I already have my wok. The Chinese guys use wok <laughs> so well when you're making your stir fry. Now this is a basic stir fry recipe and everything is going to be done in this wok and it's going to be done on very high heat. That's the secret to your stir fry. Your stir fry is supposed to be done on very high heat. So I already have my heat set to high and I have set the up. The wok has been there for about one minute and it's really, really, really hot. That's exactly what you want to do. Next, I'm going to just throw in some vegetable oil although you can use olive oil if that's what you have at hand just enough to stir fry the chicken just to cook it slightly see the oil is already hot it means that the pot was really 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 hot or rather the wok was really really hot i can already feel the heat <laughs> okay so all of my chicken will go in and i'm just gonna stir fry it quickly and a stir fry basic stir fry requires that Whatever is in the wok or in the pot is supposed to be moved around as much as possible so that it doesn't burn. So I'll know that this is done when the chicken has lost all of its pinkness and it's now a little bit whitish in color. The sizzle! I forgot to mention the sizzle! And Jenna didn't even remind me. <laughs> okay. So this is going to take about one minute or two or three because you're cooking with very high heat and you have to really keep your eye on it like literally I bought it you can do this and go do something else somewhere else and my chicken as it cooks it starts to get firmer it loses its slimy texture and slimy nature and it can be firm and it has a bite it has a, a bite texture to it so I'm just gonna take this out and place it on this white platter here just to and we're gonna continue the cooking in the in this wok. Okay, so it's time to bring all of this together. So in the same wok, I'm just gonna throw in some more vegetable oil. I actually wanted to use sesame oil for this though, but I didn't find any in the market, so I'm going with vegetable oil. So I'm just gonna allow this to get heated up and then we're gonna throw in all of our Asian aromatics. And Asian aromatics just comprises of onions, garlic, and ginger. So in here, I'm going to throw in all of my onions. And my onions are not diced, they're just, um, I slice them in strips. They're gonna scatter, it's not to go in. <laughs> did, did you get a sizzle? Don't mind me, I have to place all of my vegetables in one place, just so that it's easier for me. I'll just stop this around. Remember that you're cooking on very high heat, and you have to continue to stare. It requires a continuous stare. I think I'm just going to add a little bit of oil, just a little more. And okay. I'll just keep stirring this around for about 30 seconds until my onions have become translucent. Okay, so in here I'm going to add the chopped garlic and the chopped ginger. This completes the ancient aromatics ingredients that I'm using. And I'll just keep stirring. Now I'm not going to keep this on, on the heat for so long because garlic burns within seconds. So as soon as you perceive it, as soon as the, it releases its fragrance, you know that it's done and it's time to move on to the next thing. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's out. <laughs> next up, I'm just going to throw in some scotch bonnet peppers that I've finely chopped. Now this is going to give it some extra, extra heat. You know I like my food really hot and very spicy. You continue to stare. Next comes in the next I'm gonna throw in the carrots, which I've also sliced up in strips. This is very gonna be a very very yummy dish. Now for this chamein, chicken chamein, you can use whatever. Um, vegetables that you like or you prefer in this case I'm using some carrots I'm using bell peppers I'm using spring onions but you can go ahead and do whatever you like you can use bean sprouts you can use your 
And what other vegetables do we have? You can use your spinach, you can use your zucchini, you can use whatever vegetables that you prefer. It's totally up to you. But these are the ones that we have readily available in this part of the world in Nigeria. So that's why I'm limiting it to just carrots and bell peppers and spring onions. So I'm just going to keep moving it around. I'm still cooking on very high heat. It's really getting hot in here. And I can feel the heat. So just keep stirring, keep moving. Okay, so I'm just cooking this. I'm just going to stir fry this slightly so that the carrots get softened up a bit. And I still want it to have its crunch, but let it just get a little bit softened so that we do not start having really crunchy, crunchy carrots when we're about to have this dish. Okay. Next up is time to bring the star of this dish, which of course is my pasta. My pasta is pre-cooked, but it's not totally cooked. It's still a little bit firm because um, it's, it's still going to finish up the cooking process in the pot. So I cooked it for just four minutes and it still has some crunch to it. So in goes all of my pasta. So the pasta goes in and then of course the sauce will go in so that it will help cook the pasta through. Now this might look like a lot of sauce, but don't worry, the pasta is going to soak up all of the sauce so that it can become finely cooked. So I'm just going to keep tossing this around to ensure that it cooks evenly and that the sauce, the pasta is totally coated with the sauce. The sizzle is the best part of this whole dish for me. The best, like, oh, <laughs> I don't mind the heat. I found the fast sizzle down is there. Good to go. <laughs> so just keep stirring. You have to keep stirring. And this will take about one minute or two. While it's still cooking, I'm just going to throw in just one seasoning cube. This is some chicken seasoning just for a little bit of taste. And I'm also going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt. Just to give it a taste. You can see here that sizzle some. And I'll set all over again to combine. I'm already salivating. <laughs> can you guys tell? <laughs> Notice that I'm not staring into the pasta. I'm just staring around because I'm using a fluffed spoon for this. Usually I'm supposed to use the tongue, but my tongue is um, um, it's made of iron. And if I use iron on my non-stick pot, on my non-stick wok, it's going to damage it. So I decided to just manage the wooden spoon. But usually when you're cooking your pasta, it's important that you either use a cooking tongue or a cooking fork. But because my cooking tongue is actually made of iron, I'm using this. So I'm just stirring around it and not in it, just so that I don't break up the, the pasta strands. Okay. You can see that the liquid, the sauce that I put in earlier, is totally dried up from the pan. A step fry requires that your pan should always be dried up at all times. And it's always best to use a non-stick wok for this, a non-stick pot or non-stick pot for this recipe. So that nothing burns and nothing sticks to the pan. Okay, so it's time now to bring in the chicken. It goes right back into the, the wok. Yeah. <laughs> I keep staring, I continue to stir fry it. <laughs> okay, so right now I'm just gonna throw in my red bell pepper strips and the green ones. I'm gonna save some for garnish later. And I'm also going to throw in the spring onions. And this dish is almost as good as done. It's just a matter of combining it together. Whatever vegetables you're using, this is the time to put it. As long as they are not so hard, you can put it at the end of the cooking process and just allow the residual heat from the wok to cook it through. And this dish is as good as done. How gorgeous does it look? Looks super pretty gorgeous to me. I'm just gonna take it off. Now, when you want to serve this dish, you can just garnish it with um, some sesame seed sprinkles. Just have a little here. So you just serve it on a plate and you just sprinkle some sesame seed all around it for some, makes it look really pretty. And I think it adds some flavor to it. I don't know, but it just makes it look fine. Okay guys, you guys know that this is my favorite part of the whole process, the taste test. 
So I'm just gonna take some pasta strands. Oh Lord, I love my pasta really long. But you can cut yours into bits if you prefer. And I want some chicken. I want some vegetables as well. I just want everything. I hope it fits into my mouth. Okay, everything is here. It's still really hot though. I can really tell that it's gonna taste so good. It smells divine, like divine. I'm not going to tell you that it doesn't taste good. It tastes great. Like it has that Asian flavor, it has a whole Asian thing to it. And this one gets two thumbs up from me. Like it literally gets two thumbs up. So if you can make it at your house, I tell you, you're going to wow your guests, you're going to wow your family, and you're going to wow your friends. So go ahead and make it. And if you're ever going to recreate it, hold on please. <laughs> if you're ever going to recreate it, you can kindly send me your pictures on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. You can find me there as Delicious Foods. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I said this earlier, this is a yummy dish. There's so many other yummy dishes coming up. So you want to be the first to be notified, to get notified rather when I post or upload a new video. So hurry now and just hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell as well so that you can get notified. See you next time with another beautiful pasta recipe. Until then, remember to keep winning, keep shining, keep being beautiful, keep slaying in the kitchen, and just be kind to one another.